So if you are interested in participating in any European program for this summer or fall semester, I will be the person that you work with. And hi, everybody. I'm Ashley, and I am the other program manager for the College of Engineering, and I work um, with any program outside of Europe. Cool. So whether you have questions for API or Texas Tech side, feel free to jump in with, with any of those questions at any time. So um, just real briefly, want to just tell you a little bit about API as an organization, who we are, so you know who it is that you're planning to do an internship with. Um, API has been around for uh, just about 25 years now. We're based in Austin, Texas, and we were founded by um, the four ladies you see on the screen here who um, founded the company as, a, as a, a way to create programming that they felt comfortable sending their own students and their own children on. And we've actually hosted all of their kids on programs. So we can say that we have indeed uh, lived up to the promise that they set when they, when they founded API so long ago. So they're all still real active with the organization too. So it's a great, it's a great company and it's a great, um, program because we do really want you to feel like family and we, we treat you like that throughout the entire process. Um, and we are looking to continue to expand and develop in the different ways that we can deliver programming to meet the needs of the students as well as our partners too. So um, we're here to talk about internships and we want to talk about international internships specifically. So it's really interesting that, you know, the, you guys at Texas Tech have a great um, opportunity because you have to do an international experience and an internship is a great way to do that as well. So it's a really, really great um, way to accomplish a lot of wonderful things. But there's some real benefits that I think come along with doing an international internship as opposed to particularly doing one in a domestic location. Obviously, there's benefits in both and there's a lot of overlap, but there's some extra things that you get to do in an international experience. So part of the things we talk about is the fact that you get to you know, work in a global environment. Um, when you go and you're the only person or one of the only people from a particular location in a, lo in a place where there's people from around the world, you're really showing that you can work in a global environment and work in a dynamic environment as well. Um, obviously, you're gonna be building professional development along the way and learning different aspects or different, um, different ways and different uh, viewpoints on similar topics that you may have learned here, but learning them from a different perspective. Growing your network and growing your uh, industry professional network is a really great benefit as well. Um, and it's, it's a great chance to make contacts from around the world in your industry. So that will help you throughout your career and into your professional life as well. Um, you know, global awareness, professional development, career readiness and self discovery. Those are all some buzzwords that we like to use when it comes to what are the benefits of doing an international internship, but they truly are um, um, Things that, that will happen as part of this process. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about their time abroad is when they really learned who they were, what their goals were, kind of helped reaffirm their trajectory, whether it be a professional or a personal trajectory. So there's a lot of really great life changing and life affirming things that happen when you're participating in an international experience. And you're adding the professional component of doing an internship on top of that as well. So it's a really, really great benefit in many, many different respects. So um, Texas Tech identified specific locations that they've approved through the API portfolio of programs. So the list you'll see here on the left, Chile, Ireland, specifically our program in Dublin, uh, New Zealand, Portugal, uh, Scotland, and Spain. These are the different locations that we are able to offer programming for, for, your, for you as Texas Tech students. So we'll talk a little bit about each of those specifically at the end, but we're first going to cover some more general information and kind of things that apply to all the different uh, aspects related to the internship experience. So you are all, most of you anyway, are probably engineering students, unless someone happened to come on that wasn't. But um, the, this is just kind of a general overview that we would normally say that there's a lot of different opportunities for placement. And so um, from an engineering perspective, what's important to note is that um, we can do a lot of different things and we can do a lot of different placements. And Laura will talk about that in, in just a moment. But um, the, the biggest thing is that each individual, each placement that we do is individually tailored to the student. So it's not to say there's a list of internships that we have and you pick one and apply for it. But Laura really works with you and with our placement organizations and partners on the ground to find the perfect placement for you. So while we have a list of things up here, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is an exhaustive list. There may be something that's there that's not listed here, or you can try to incorporate personal things that you want to do as part of your internship experience into that as well. So um, because they are all customized and because it is such an individual placement process, we really have the opportunity to try to match you with the, with the best possible experience so that you get the most professionally and personally out of it. So I'm going to let Laura talk a little bit about the application process and the, the requirements if she doesn't mind just a, just a little bit here. Thank you, Jason. Um, so during the application process, first you're going to contact your Texas Tech um, uh, uh, Study Abroad office to make sure that you are approved for this program. Not only do we need, of course, these requirements like a 3.0 GPA for a STEM 
careers, but also we need to know that you, your university will approve your participation in this program. You also submit your cover letter to letters of recommendation, preferably written by professors who have taught you in an academic level. So they know you, they know who you are and how you participate in, in, um, in your, the class. Um, of course, your resume, listing everything you've done, your skills, your, what your experience is, and of course your education. You, we have received by then your university appro approval uh, once Texas Tech has approved your participation. And then right after that, you, you submit all your documents. You will have an advising session with me where we will go over your goals, your experience, your skills, because we build a portfolio for each student. And that helps us do the personal placement, the personalized placement that we do with you. So we'll go over what your expectations are for this program, what your expectations and career goals are. That way we can find the perfect fit for you. After that, you will have your official letter uh, or official offer letter where it will list what your responsibilities are, who your supervisor is. So you'll have all the instructions before you start. Cool. So the um, main point, of course, we want to make sure that you're working with Allie and Ashley or whoever your advisor is to ensure that this is a program that's going to be applicable for you. And then we'll work with the actual process, but we want to make sure you're taking care of the Texas Tech side of things um, first so that this is uh, something that you can continue to proceed. So um, with an API internship, um, what, there's a lot of different things that come along with it. So obviously, Laura's talks a little bit about the, the and I've mentioned it a couple of times too, the tailored internship placement, which is the main part, obviously. Um, so again, working really hard to find the perfect placement for you so that we're matching your professional skill set along with your personal skill set and really meeting you in, in terms of the, uh, the, the things you want to accomplish and the goals you set for the experience. Um, you'll also have access to our API Connect virtual workspace. So this is our online platform where there's a lot of different uh, information that you can do there. There's orientation materials, there's career readiness preparation, there's different cultural activities and things. It's a really great platform for you to navigate and to connect with other learners. Um, and um, it, it's, a, it's a virtual space, even though you'll be doing your uh, internships on site, you'll still have access to a, a significant numbers of materials on this. Um, once you start the application process, you'll utilize that portal and then be in there throughout the entire process of your, of your internship session. So again, orientation materials and resources that are there pre-departure as well as once you arrive on site. Uh, you will receive a workplace and culture orientation that's conducted by API's resident directors and staff on site. So they're gonna go through and teach you about um, what, what's the workplace culture that's different, what are important things you need to know about being an actual person working in this location as opposed to a tourist or a student even, um, what are some things you need to know. They're gonna help you get situated, walk you through to your housing, um, meet with your employers and everything like that. And and they're, they're going to also be there throughout the process for you. So um, the, the workplace and culture orientation is a really great way to, um, you know, really let sink in the things that you've been studying and looking at ahead of time throughout those orientation materials that we'll provide for you as well as the research that you've done on your own to help get you ready for this experience. Uh, and then we'll kind of bring it all together in that in that particular bit of time. Um, housing is included in all of our API programs, so you don't need to worry about finding an apartment or a place to live while you're there. That's all taken care of by API. Um, you'll be living ideally with other API students within in a, a cohort of us students that are also there at your internship site. So you will be with other uh, people on the program. Um, and then again, access to our resident directors and coordinators. So they're going to be there to help you and support you and give you any kind of emergency support or assistance that you need throughout the entire duration of the experience for you. Um, they're also going to in, uh, incorporate some cultural activities, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So there's there's more to it than just the actual internship experience itself. There's some, some other things that come along with that. Um, academic credit, um, there's a, a option to earn academic credit. And so I'm going to let Allie and Ashley touch on that just a little bit because I want to make, I'm not never sure exactly <laughs> the process where we are with that. So I just want to let them touch on that. <laughs> well, I happened to uh, follow up on this yesterday. And so API does offer academic credit for their internships. This is still currently under review with <laughs> Texas Tech University. Um, we are hopeful that they will be able to review this credit soon and it will be able to be utilized for your internship experience. But if that is not approved, then you are not able to utilize this academic credit. And there can be the opportunity for you to receive academic credit through your home department. And that is something you would want to speak with your academic advisor about. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So to stress on that, even regardless of whether you receive credit with API or not, you'll still receive feedback, you'll still receive support, you'll still receive guidance from your internship supervisors on site. So um, if you do need to receive credit through your home institutional department, 
we're able to coordinate a little bit with that and help provide them with materials that they would need to be able to, to grant you that credit. So, um, you know, feedback, um, um, you know, things that we would, we would need, we would work with you to make sure that we're able to help you get that credit that's needed if you're not doing the credit through us and through the program that we offer. Um, so the internship placement oversight, um, what we mean by this is that while you're there, the internship is a professional experience. So we want you to engage with your employers and your internship supervisors as much as you can and really use this as a professional development experience. However, we want you to also recognize that we're there to help support you and give you guidance along the way and intervene if it becomes necessary. So if there's some type of an issue, if you're not maybe understanding a particular um, skill that you're being asked to do, or if something's not going 100% the way that you thought it would be, we would encourage you to reach out and, and talk with your advisor, your internship supervisor about this first, but know that we're there to help you. So if something doesn't work, we can step in and, and uh, we have our internship uh, placement team on site as well as Laura back in the US to help intervene and answer any questions and make sure that again, the experience is, is everything that you want it to be and that there isn't um, anything that, that isn't working out correctly for you. So there's internship placement site along the way over oversight throughout the entire process. It's not as if once you're placed and you've started, you're, you're free and let go. Uh, we want you to know that we're there to support you as much as we can throughout the entire process and the entire internship experience. Uh, the Career Development Digital Badge is something that you're going to be earning as part of the program. Um, and this is built into the internship programs themselves. So that's right alongside. It's not anything extra. It's just part of the fabric of what the experience is. And the Digital Badge is a really great benefit for you because it helps you um, able to articulate the skills that you're learning and add these to your LinkedIn profile or an e-portfolio or anything that you're doing from an electronic standpoint. This is actually a digital badge that has data attached to it that you can use to show employers what exactly it was that you did on your program and the skills that you learned. And then you can turn around and translate that into um, um, data that you can use to look for jobs and uh, search databases of positions that are open that uh, are identify the specific skills that you worked on as being relevant to what they're needing for that particular, um, for the candidates for that position. So it's a really great tool and a really great benefit of the internship experience and something that uh, allows you to really um, uh, demonstrate in a tangible way what it is that you did as part of the internship experience. So I mentioned API cultural events and activities, and this is something that's a really good benefit of going through, through us for these programs. In fact, I just did a virtual program, um, which was a pasta cooking class with our resident director in Rome, um, as an example of, of, a, virtu of, a, of a, a cultural activity. But um, there's going to be different things that you'll have the chance to do and participate in as part of your API program when you're on site. And these are at no additional cost to you. So these are different activities that might be going to the movies, a concert, a museum, or a cultural tour. Um, and so whenever possible, we're gonna incorporate these into your internship experience. I say that because your schedule might be different than some of the student experiences. Um, you know, it is a full-time work experience. So it's, it's a little bit more, um, a little bit trickier at times to get things scheduled in, but you have opportunities to participate in various cultural events whenever possible and whenever your schedule permits. So we wanna make sure that you recognize and, and recognize that you're there to do more than just have that experience, but to be able to experience the culture and to really understand what it's like to live as a local uh, and to be part of the community in which you're doing your internship while you're there. Um, ideally, you're gonna make friends along the way with your internship experience too, and you'll start to meet locals and probably get more integrated than I ever have in any of the locations I've been. Um, but we do our best to make sure that you're able to experience some of the, the great hotspots for sure and, and some, some really cool events and things along the way um, while you're there. So, and these again are all included and there's no additional cost or anything like that. Um, they're just part of your program fee. Um, so I do want to mention scholarships. So um, we do offer two semester and two summer scholarships of uh, $500 each for participants on our international internships program. So those are definitely ways to help defray some of that cost. Um, there are additional scholarships that you can apply for as well, both through us and then uh, we would encourage you to look at outside funding sources as well as look at Texas Tech to see what other scholarship opportunities might be available through your institution. Um, and I do also want to mention that um, Texas Tech students get an automatic discount of $250 off of any published internship price. So when you're looking on our uh, website or looking at the different internship programs that are out there, know that you're going to get an automatic $250 deduction from that program fee. So we're really excited to offer that to, to Texas Tech students. Um, so um, there is a scholarship that you can have uh, application that's on our website. You can read about all the different scholarships and the different criteria that they have and then fill out the application um, once you're there and, and accepted into the program uh, to, to, to receive one of those scholarships. Um, so I just want to touch on housing really quick, um, talking about this because it is a really important aspect of the program, obviously. 
So as I mentioned, API housing is included in all of our different sites. And our number one consideration is, um, is safety. So we're gonna make sure that you have uh, safe and secure accommodations. Um, and it's gonna vary depending on where you live in terms of what that housing is gonna look like. Um, I mentioned apartments and most of our interns do tend to live in apartments just because that's a more independent living style and the internship experience itself is a more independent type of a program. But there are a couple of options for host families depending on where it is that you're gonna be going in our, our programs in Latin America or Spain, for example. Um, but the, typically you'll live with apartments again with other API participants. So meals are not included, but you do have access to a fully equipped kitchen. Um, and you know, there are some things that we'll do like a group welcome meal and farewell meals and things of that nature. But otherwise you're, you're kind of on your own to cook your meals, but that can be a really fun way to really experience the culture and to go to the local market and get the fresh ingredients and try some, some new and exciting things for you. Uh, but we do include the housing again, and we do, um, um, uh, make sure that the housing is as safe as possible. Now, um, in the time of COVID, we've reduced the, the number of people that are living in, in places as much as possible. And we've also tried to limit the amount of travel that's necessary um, to the extent that we can from your apartment um, or your home to your placement. Um, so if you don't have to utilize public transportation, then, then you, that's great. If you can walk there, that's what we'll try to do. But recognizing that many of our placements are in larger cities and it's not necessarily possible to get you right next door or something like that. But we do try to do our best to accommodate and make sure that we give you um, uh, close proximity to housing. But again, with safety being our first and, and foremost priority in that sense. And Jason, if I can add, uh, during your final, in your final packet, you will receive information of your commute. So you'll have an idea before you go of how long your commute will be and what your possibilities are. If you have to walk, if you have to take the train or a bus or something, you'll know ahead of time. Thank you. Um, so I mentioned the API Connect virtual learning space. Just to kind of give you a little bit more information about that, there's a variety of different activities that will take place here. So it's, again, a chance for you to build a, connect, a community by connecting with other learners, so other students that are on the program, our resident directors and staff, excuse me. It's also the place that you'll complete the different badge activities to make sure that you're earning that, that digital badge. Uh, so the career development um, badge or the global learning badge, these are our internship badges. Um, so it's a great way for you to have access to some really cool cultural content as well. So you see Matteo, who's doing a, a, a Italian language lesson without actually speaking, um, kind of showing us to, uh, some different things. So it's, it's a really fun space that you're able to, um, to access and to get some really, really good information and some really, really exciting and, and fun different things. Um, and again, it's, uh, the, the badges are developed are looking at the skills that employers are looking for based on the NACE career, um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers. So they are relevant skills that we know colleges and employers are looking for. So um, our program dates. Um, so the summer options that we have um, are going to be three different sessions. So we have eight week internships that are offered in three terms. So May, um, May 20th through July 17th is our session one. June 3rd through July 31st is session two, and June 17th through August 14th is um, the session three. Um, I just actually checked with, with Texas Tech because the dates, I um, wanted to make sure they were coinciding well and which terms would work well with, with your calendar. And it looks like all of them will work this year. So that's, that's good. So um, I know it doesn't pan up exactly with your summer schedule dates. I know that your summer terms are a little bit different. But it's nice because this can be an option for you as long as you're not planning to take any courses on campus at all. Um, you can still participate in any of these internship sessions, which is which is really nice. So does anyone have any questions up at, to this point? I want to stop and see if anybody has any questions um, that we can address right now before we get into the specific locations. And I'll just kind of briefly touch on a couple of, of topics and points on the different various locations that we have. Feel free. Yeah, I had, a, I had a question here. Yeah. Um, I was trying to find an internship for the construction engineering, but I couldn't find the ones you had on the list. I just found one in Brazil and another one in, I believe, Australia. That's about it. So again, we don't, we don't list specific internships that we have per se. That's why I say everyone is, each individual uh, placement is customized. So what that okay. list that I showed earlier, they may, it may not specifically state that. It doesn't mean that we can't place it. What we would do in that particular case is we'd set up, we want to have you chat with Laura, who would then talk to you about what it is that you'd want to do as part of that internship experience. And then she would be able to tell you if that's something that we can place or work with our partners on site to be able to find a location or a placement that would be able to find something like that for you. Okay. All right. 
so yeah, that's kind of the, it's the tricky part, but also the interesting part is that we, we can't list everything that we do because it is so customized and individualized, but it does give us a lot more freedom to be able to do uh, the variety of different things that we, that we can do in that sense, so. Okay. And Kevin, I'm adding my email um, in the chat so you can send me any questions you have and then we can connect later. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question though. And it's, it does highlight for sure that even if you don't see specifically what it is you, you're, you're looking for, that doesn't mean we can't do it. It just means that, you know, it's, we don't list that specific placement, but we have it. So um, there was a question about why we don't see API on the TTU website internship list. Um, it should be there. I'm, I've seen it in it the is. past. Um, so they have like updated the TTU list as well as on the IEP website. So I think you might need to be searched by your major because not every location on the main study abroad website is specifically for engineering students. Yeah, it's there for other majors. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Great question, though. Thank you. So yes, we do have programs for computer science. Absolutely, we do. So that's another example of where it's not specifically listed there, perhaps. It doesn't mean we don't have it. I mean, in essence, we can pretty much do anything of um, uh, any kind of placements that, are, that, that we have except for hands-on medical, really. Um, so that's really the way that it works. It's, it's not, um, we don't list every single exhaustive major that's there, but yes, we absolutely can do computer science majors placements. And we've done actually some really cool ones, in fact, mm -hmm. um, for that, for sure. And I'll, I'll just jump in real quick. Um, if, it, because internship placements might change from year to year, we can always update the website if they say, for example, we do have computer science. We can go and update our website and put, you know, API locations on there. So um, if you don't see it and we talk about it today, don't worry, we can always change the website so that it is matching what this um, info session is about. Thanks, Ashley. That's a really good point. It is a very dynamic process. I know in the past we had, and it changes from time to time from location. That's why a lot of times people ask us, well, where's the best location to go for this particular internship? And it might be that in the previous year, we had a lot of placement opportunities available in New Zealand. But then the next year, for some reason, New Zealand didn't have any placements available in those areas. So we had to stop saying that was a good placement for this location. So it does vary from term to term. And it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to specify specifically that everything is gonna be available in each location every time. So it really is a, a evidence of how, how individualized and how personalized each of these internship placements is and, and everything that we can do for them. So, but great questions, very great questions. Um, so the question I see last year, keeping in the know that there was an option for Prague, looks like that's gone. We haven't had internships in Prague. There may have been another program. I'm not sure. Nope. Okay, I'm not sure then where that one came from. We, we haven't offered internships in Prague to date, so I'm not sure where that one. We have a program in Prague, but not, a, not an internship program, so. Not yet. Right. <laughs> good point, good point, not yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different internship organizations and companies that are out there that offer internships. So it might have very well been another one. So cool. Any other any other questions right now, or should I go on to the internship locations? Okay, cool. I will go ahead and just start clicking through here. So I won't spend a lot of time on each of these different individual locations, um, but I will just want to kind of highlight some of them for you here. So these are um, all of the different sites that we have programming um, internships available. So uh, the first one I want to talk about is Santiago, Chile. Um, in, in Santiago, we have a variety of different placements that are available in a lot of great areas. Santiago is a very dynamic city and these internship placements are available in both English and Spanish speaking. Um, so you don't need to be a proficient Spanish speaker. However, I will say that if you are not a Spanish speaker, it does depend a little, your internship placement might be more limited. So there, the, if you do have the language skills, it's great. But again, it's not a necessity. Uh, but there's a lot of different um, um, opportunities for here. There's a growing area of the, of the world as well. So there's a lot of great placement opportunities that are available in this particular, in, in this particular city. So um, it's beautiful. It's a, the largest city and capital of Chile um, and a really, really um, modern city as well. Um, and so here housing participants are, have the option of living in a homestay with meals or in a furnished apartment. So this is an example of a placement where you would choose between a homestay and an apartment. The benefit of a homestay in this particular case, obviously, is that it includes some of your meals, which is nice, um, or um, the apartment is, again, more of the person or the um, independent style living. 
Dublin, Ireland is probably one of our most popular, if not our most popular internship site for sure. Um, there's a lot of great internship opportunities here. Um, so again, it's an English speaking location. So there's no language barrier for our students and it's a, a major European city. So there's a lot of different um, industries that are there. Um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for um, um, different companies and different organizations that are based in Dublin, but have a, a national presence, an international presence. So that's also a good opportunity um, in many different respects too. Um, so it's a city that feels like a small village, but it's a pretty big city, which is really nice. Um, and it's also very culturally relevant and it's a very popular destination for sure. So in Dublin, students live in a uh, shared apartment uh, that is furnished. So there's no housing or no homestay option here, but it is an apartment living in, in Dublin for sure. And again, I would say that's probably one of our, if not our most popular internship location for sure. Um, New Zealand, we have our program in Auckland. So Auckland is the largest city in New Zealand um, and it's a really nice cosmopolitan city. Um, it's known as the city of sales. It's very beautiful. New Zealand is one of the coolest countries that I've been to in a very long time. Um, it's uh, definitely a very outdoorsy location. So if you're uh, an outdoor person, New Zealand is certainly a place that you'd want to consider. Um, I will say for full disclosure that we don't know yet when New Zealand is going to open 100% for sure. So we want to be uh, careful and, and ready to say that if, if you are planning on New Zealand, we want to take into account uh, that COVID may have an impact on um, our ability to offer internship placements. Um, we haven't officially technically canceled anything yet. Laura, is that correct? We canceled this week officially. Okay. Um, just because <laughs> we can't, we can't yet. Um, we were trying to work with the, with the government to make sure that everything was, was going to be available, but there is a new strain in New Zealand, if you haven't heard, um, that apparently is more contagious. So the government is putting up more restrictions. I don't know at this point how more strict that can become. Um, but yes, we, have, we are canceling this week. Officially, we're announcing it tomorrow. Okay, well, you have the inside scoop on that, though. But New Zealand is no longer available <laughs> for internships this summer. <laughs> Unfortunately. But, um, yes, but um, in, in the future, depending on when you're thinking about an intern, then um, hopefully we'll be able to, to start placements there again, because it is a really great location and a lot of really cool opportunities for placements are, are happening in New Zealand as well. Um, Lisbon is our newest internship site that's been approved for Texas Tech students. And this one is really exciting because I love Lisbon. Um, it's um, a really, really kind of an undiscovered gem of, of Western Europe. Um, it's the capital of Portugal and it's definitely one of the um, fastest growing and most under underutilized cities in Europe, if you will. Um, I know Ali was not was there not that long ago. And so she's, she's a, a fan of the city as well. <laughs> Very much so, yes. <laughs> yeah. And we've been able to find some really good placements for students in a variety of different academic areas, including different engineering placements here in particular. Uh, and so the, the students live in a furnished apartment in, in the city of Lisbon. Um, and so it's a really great navigable city. It's not expensive. Um, and don't let the language barrier be uh, uh, frightening to you. They speak Portuguese, obviously, in, in Portugal, but the languages, the, the placements is primarily in English. So again, if you have Portuguese language experience, that's great, but it's not a necessity to find a very good placement for you here. Um, and I would say that this is becoming a more and more popular destination, the more the more we get into it. So I would, it, it's one of those cities that I think is going to really blow up and boom even more once, but once travel resumes again. So it's definitely a place that I would encourage you, encourage you to consider. Um, so Edinburgh, Scotland, this is another one of our sites, which we have several applicants for, from Texas Tech for this site already. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, Edinburgh is the capital, or I'm sorry, the, um, the, yeah, the capital of Scotland. And so it's a, a really, really great um, city. Um, I love this picture that's here. It's actually beautiful and it looks like a photograph or from a magazine or something, but it actually <laughs> looks like that. Um, Edinburgh is the cultural capital of Scotland um, and it's got um, some really world famous music festivals. Um, it's a cosmopolitan city, but it's still pretty small. So it still feels really walkable. There's a lot of history if you're into um, like uh, literature and English, old English literature and things, it's a really great, great place. Uh, the Queen's residence, the summer residence at Hollywood House is there. So it's got a lot of history. And Scotland in general um, has a ton of history and it's a really unique um, geographical area um, with everything that they've got going on there. Um, as far as internship placements are concerned, Edinburgh is among those that we can do a lot of different things because it is such a, a larger cosmopolitan area and there's such a great uh, plethora of, of opportunities for placement. So it's definitely an area that we can, we can do a lot in for sure. Um, and in Edinburgh, you do live in um, apartments as well. So you have um, that shared apartment experience with other interns that are on the program with you. 
Uh, Madrid, Spain, which is another site that we have a, an applicant for, so we're excited about that. Uh, Madrid, um, Spain being one of my favorite countries that I, I studied abroad in Spain, so of course I'm a little partial to, to Spain, long time ago, but um, uh, the capital of Spain, and it's right in the middle of Spain, of course, so it's really easy to travel and to ac access the rest of Europe, which is nice. Um, it's um, a beautiful, beautiful site with really great weather, and again, you're really close to lots of different areas. Um, the internships in general tend to be placed Monday through Thursday. Um, we try to do that as much as we can so that students have some time to travel. Um, this is across the sites. And now, it won't always be the same depending on what your, what your uh, internship um, uh, hours are listed and, and how that works with your specific placement, but we do try to encourage our employers to make sure that placements do give you opportunities for travel because we, again, recognize that you're able to um, experience a lot of things outside of the actual placement itself, experience the local culture and the ability to travel while you're there too. So anyway, I say that because Madrid is, is a really, really nice place to be able to travel from and to experience the rest of Spain as well as other locations. So again, um, Spanish is not a requirement of the placement, although if you do have Spanish language, it will open up a few more doors for you for sure. But again, it's not, it's not a requirement. Uh, and Spain is another location where you have a housing option of choosing between a homestay family with some of your meals included or a furnished department with other interns on the program. So um, do you want to touch again, I've sort of alluded to it a little bit, but just to quickly mention to you that, you know, we do recognize that we're still in a time of COVID. You know, I wish we weren't. <laughs> I'm hoping, I was hoping by this time we'd be, we'd be at least moved on to a little bit further along, but we're, we're getting there. But we do recognize that we are still in, the, in that time and we're still dealing with the, with the current pandemic. Um, so we have modified some of the things that we do on site as a result of that. So, um, you know, different uh, excursions and different activities we've taken into account so that they are, um, excuse me, COVID friendly, requiring masks that we worn on all API activities and things of that nature. Um, modifications to housing, as I mentioned, to um, allow for fewer occupancies. So it might be, um, you know, two people in a larger apartment as opposed to a, normally there would be four or something of that nature. Um, and again, minimizing the need to use public transportation whenever possible so that we can ensure or try to ensure that you're, you're you know, staying as safe as possible. Um, and again, just really taking into account all the different safety measures that are there um, for any group activities, as well as all the local and international laws and rules and, and everything like that. So uh, we are monitoring it constantly and updating things as we go. And, and as you just learned, I didn't know it. We, we haven't officially announced it about canceling the New Zealand site, um, but things like that, if we can't send students somewhere safely or if we're not able to, we certainly, we certainly won't do that. So um, we do take it very seriously and we are continuing to make any changes as necessary as, as part of that. So. So that's the last slide that I have. That's the last bit. So I want to make sure I leave enough time for questions and things of that nature. Um, so I know Laura already shared the uh, website in the site uh, or in the chat. So if you don't already have the link to the API uh, website, for sure, take a look at that. Um, you will see again that the, there are some other locations, but I want to make sure you know that there are some of the approved locations for the Texas Tech students. Um, so make sure you're checking out those, those sites as well. Um, and then you also have Laura's email on there as well as mine if you have any specific questions about the API side of things. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let you all ask any questions or share anything that you have or see what things we can help you with. Well, Taylor, as we mentioned before, you're asking um, which location is better for your major. Um, we, you and I can talk about it as well as your Texas Tech advisors. It depends on what your major is. Sometimes we have computer science that it, we, we have great opportunities almost everywhere, but there's some other type of engineering programs that will, or uh, careers that will have, like it's more of a niche field where we have uh, just a specific location where we would direct you to, or maybe three options that we can discuss Yeah, great question. Because again, again, it's it's individual customized placements. We really want to make sure we're we're looking at what it is you want to get out of the experience for sure. Well, I'll talk a little bit about the like application process since yeah, we're all here. Um, so I do see um, a couple familiar names. So with going abroad in general, you will first begin your application with Texas Tech University. And for any non-faculty-led program, you will have an advising application. And you find the advising application by selecting start application on any non-faculty-led program. It's 
especially if you're doing an internship abroad, any of the API program applications go directly to the advising application. That advising application is where you do the study abroad 101 video and assessment. We want you to think about your goals, personal, professional, academic. What are some of the pros and cons of the various programs you've looked into? And those can especially be helpful when you're then working with API about, well, these are the goals that I have for my internship and why I selected the location that I did, et cetera. And then you'll either meet with myself for Europe or Ashley for everywhere else. And we will advise you, then you are moved into your program specific application and it's your program specific application. We have a, for summer, we have like a general application deadline of March 1st, but with API, I believe summer one and summer two have earlier deadlines because you must first apply and be approved by Texas Tech before you can apply through API. So I will let you both talk about what your deadlines are for the summer. Yes, yeah, so for summer one, February 1st is the first deadline. And that is, for instance, if you have to, if we need a visa, we have to find housing that is closer to um, your area of, of where you're gonna be working. We wanna make sure that we have enough time to coordinate all of that. Um, and that's why for summer one, that starts a little earlier in May 20th, February 1st will be the first deadline. And then for summer two is February 15th. And for the third summer session, uh, it would be March 1st, which mm -hmm. aligns with Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. Yes, so first you apply and are approved by Texas Tech because we do need to check your GPA and conduct. And then again, while you do need a minimum 2.5 GPA to be eligible to go abroad, you do need a 3.0 um, for an API internship. And we wanna make sure that you are approved, that you have a passport, et cetera. So if you do need a visa, you have that passport so you can apply for it. And then you will work with Laura with API. Perfect. Yeah. Yes, thank so, you. So if you don't have a 3.0 this semester, then you shouldn't even bother applying? With API, um, you have the opportunity to kind of explain why your GPA is not a 3.0. Let's say you've always had a high GPA, but at some point you encountered a family problem or you were having, you were too overwhelmed with too many classes. Just write a paragraph or two explaining your situation and we'll evaluate and review your application. If it's above 2.5, which is really the minimum, um, there, it, it, you should be fine. The main reason why we select the 3.0 for STEM careers is because employers really appreciate students that, are, that have a, a, the discipline, that have the good grades, but that doesn't mean that they want to accept you in the position. Okay. Great question. Great question. Does anybody else have any, any questions at all? So we apply through this link that Laura sent in the chat, the intern abroad, and then we just wait. So you apply, go ahead, Jason. No, go ahead, Laura. No, so you first have your advising session with Texas Tech. And once that's ready, you can apply to API, but first you have to make sure that you have the advising session with your advisors at Texas Tech and um, mm -hmm. Ali, just share the link that you have to look into. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go through that link first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other? Here, I'll throw some other um, Texas Tech resources in the chat. We have um, a passport office on campus. So if you do not have a passport and you need to apply for one, you can do so on campus. And then I also have um, under our the IEP website, we do have some scholarship information that we can send to you as well. And then there's, yeah, I feel like that's a good a good solid start. Nice. So you said that um, <clears throat> the advisors will like kind of put us in um, internships based on like our skill level. And you know, I don't really know if factors go into that, but when choosing on this link where we want to do the internship, does it really matter right now? Um, As on, the IEP, on the IEP website, no, because it's not going to put you in a specific program. It puts you in the advising application. Okay, so it's just a preference really for now. Locations, yes. 
Um, and then if we find that a, a loca one location might be more favor favorable for you, then we'll discuss it and we'll talk about maybe switching locations or what your options are within that location. For example, if you want to do computer science, but you want to work also for an NGO, is it feasible to work for an NGO, I don't know, in Scotland? Or would it be better to do it in Dublin? So we'll have these conversations along the way. I got you. I got you. And also, like in your advising application, there's an opportunity for you to compare different programs. And if you're really unsure, you can have that initial conversation with Laura before you start your advising application. And she can say, well, here's are the locations that you should look into. And you can put those on your advising application. And then Allie and I will work with you to, to talk a little bit more about the process for you to pick on the location. And say you pick a location and a, a month later, it doesn't look like it's gonna be the best fit. We can move your application to another location. Perfect. And that's a good point to um, kind of stress too, the, the uh, importance of starting early in the process too. The earlier you start, the more opportunity you have to kind of figure out things and move things around to a certain degree. You can't start too early because then we won't know ahead of time what we're gonna have the placement available. But the earlier we know, the more we can look into it and the more we can find out um, um, you know, what kinds of opportunities would be available for you and then what's gonna work best in that particular sense, so. So a question regard from Taylor, how would y'all differ from say global experiences at the same location like Dublin? Are you meaning um, different from, you know, between like Dublin and Santiago or different between different, what would the experience be like in different locations? Oh, are you saying our internship program compared to global experiences internship program in Dublin? Gotcha, okay. Um, I'm not tremendously familiar with a lot of the different offers of the other internship providers per se in terms of the specifics of their programs, but I do know that a lot of international internship programs work in a similar way in that they're customized placements and they're going to offer you a variety of different um, opportunities outside the experience of just the internship itself. So I know that Global Experiences has some um, other things included as well. Um, there's different, different things that are part of the process. Um, you know, of course, we, we like to think that the programs that we're able to find in our staff are really high, the, 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 the highest quality, and we're able to really provide you with the best possible experience. And I'm sure that that's what the other organization would say as well. So um, I think it just comes down to where you feel a good fit and where it is that you feel it's going to be the proper fit for you. So when you start doing research and talking with the different representatives that you have and looking at all the different things that are lined up, like Ashley said, you can compare different programs in your in your advising um, process. So make sure you do that. We want you to check out all the different programs that you have and make sure you're making the choice that's going to be the best fit for you. Look at what's included with the program. Look at the different opportunities. Look at the, anything extra that you have. You know, one thing that, that we offer is our digital badge, which isn't necessarily something that a lot of other programs do offer. And I do think there's some really good benefit of what that badge is, both the tangible effect of being able to add it to your LinkedIn portfolio or LinkedIn um, profile, excuse me, but also the different benefits that you get from having that, being able to search for the different job databases and things of that nature. So um, definitely look at all the different um, ins and outs of what's included with the different programs to see which is going to be the best fit for you. But ultimately, I think it's going to come down to, you know, where do you feel the best connection? Where do you feel it's going to be a good fit? And, and who are you able to connect with in terms of finding that placement for you? It is kind of hard to differentiate, especially when there are so many similarities and a lot of overlap with with regard to the different opportunities. But, you know, part of the reason that, that Texas Tech works with specific institutions is to get, or organizations like us, is to provide a little bit of an option for variety and then also different programs in different countries and, and things like that. But yeah, when it comes down to the specific locations and it's the same location and it's the same thing, it can be a little bit more tricky to, to make a decision as to which provider to go with for sure. So the digital badge, again, the digital badge is, um, something that you earn as part of the program um, and it's built into the fabric of what the internship experience is with us. So um, what it is, is you will complete a series of activities along the way, which again is part of the process. So you'll be asked to reflect on, on different things while you're doing the internship program. It'll help you engage with locals. It might tell you to, for example, 
it asks three different people in the country that have the same job that you do, what it's like to work in that field and then reflect on what it is that they said. And the idea of the digital badge is to help you make the most of your experience and to really engage more fully with the community and with the experience itself. Uh, and then what you do is once you complete these various tasks along the way, you actually earn a digital badge that is this um, it's, it's, a, it's a, a badge that metadata is attached to it and you can affix the badge to your LinkedIn profile under skills and achievements or awards and achievements. And then employers who anyone who looks at your, your uh, LinkedIn portfolio could click on that and see what it was that you did. So you earned the global workplace communication badge doing an internship in Dublin. Oh, I see that you did this. You worked on your intercultural communication skills. You did these activities to earn this badge and you demonstrated that you're able to work in a, in a, in a, in a, a multinational environment with the people from different locations and, and, you know, just as an example. So it, it really is a benefit for you because it gives you, it's a, it's a, 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 a badge, an award that you earn as something that shows something that you accomplished and the skills that you did as part of the experience. So it's kind of like a, a bonus add-on. In addition to saying you did an internship, the digital badge is something that you're able to affix to your, your portfolio to show, to give some tangible proof behind what it was that you did, rather than just say, oh, I did a really cool internship experience and I learned, I, I interned for eight weeks in Dublin over the summer and it was great. You can say, look, these are the skills that I worked on and the things that I did, and here's this badge to prove it, to show you exactly what it was that I did and, and I earned it. Because we have to certify the badge. It's not, you don't just check things off in a box. We actually have to go in and certify that you completed these things and give you feedback and whatnot. So it's to help you make the most of your experience and to make sure that you're engaging a lot, but also give you something beneficial to come out of with it at the end. Yes, um, not all programs will have a digital badge. I know API has been in the digital space, space excuse me, for many years. Um, one thing I do want to add about the digital badge is it's six modules, actually eight modules. The first one and the, and the last one will be self-reflection. So for instance, you will have time management. It's something that you will work on very early on and you'll have a video. Um, you set up a goal about how you think you should manage your time a little better or kind of self-reflect um, on how you have managed your time up to this point. And then once you start working on your other skills and working at your internship, you will realize, you know, whether you have met your goals, if you have anything else that you have to add. Um, and then at the end, you'll have a self-reflection over the entire um, experience. And that's part of what Jason was saying, where we were cert certified that you completed the, the di digital badge. Um, once you have that, you'll put it in your, you can attach it to your um, LinkedIn and then it's like a micro certificate of what you have done. So I know a lot of times we think employers will worry about our GPAs and uh, having a 4.0 GPA is great, but they also want to know about your skills. Do you have intercultural skills? Do you have communication skills? Do you have leadership skills? And that's something that is really important as you grow as a professional. So this will give you like a jump start um, in your professional career. So I just put a link in the chat to the section of our website that talks about the digital badges so you can learn a little bit more about what those are and specifically which, which of the badges we offer. There's a variety of them. So for the internship participants that are on site, it's the, the career development badge is the one that you would earn as an on site internship participant. So it's the very first one that's listed on that website that I just sent the link to. I have a question. So um... Let's say, for example, I'm applying to the Dublin, Ireland internship, and on the application, it asks me to set up an appointment with an advisor. Since that's a part of the IPA, would it all automatically set me up with one of you guys to talk about that? Or do I have to kind of go out of my way and email you guys about like what my situation is and what type of internship I want to do? So are you on the, the Texas Tech website? Yeah, so I went to the link you sent me with, um, yeah, the Texas Tech website, yes. And it has a list and I clicked on mechanical and it has a list of CEA, CRCCs, APIs, just a bunch of different ones. So I clicked on the Dublin one and it took me to application. And it says, make an appointment with a study abroad counselor. So would that be with one of you guys or with someone else? That would be with me if you want to go to Europe. Okay, perfect. Okay. And I saw the question come in, how early can I look into next summer options? I'm here to get an early idea. Um, it's a great question. I mean, 
you can certainly look at the different ideas and things that you have available and start thinking about it and learning as early on as you want for, for sure. Um, as far as the actual planning process is concerned, you know, Ellie, what would you, or Ashley, what would you say in terms of when they, when you think a good advising time would be to set up for you if they're looking at next summer? Um, this summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going to say like September. Yeah. That's what I was going to say too, is sometime either this summer or early in the fall um, to kind of, um, you know, that would be a good time to start um, looking at the process and to really start thinking about where you want to focus your attention and, and whatnot. So, I mean, getting some ideas, looking at the different options that are available for sure, but start focusing in on things, you know, sometime this summer or early in the fall semester. So 2022 applications for summer are opening October 1st. So that's why Allie mentioned fall would probably be better to, to kind of set up that advising session, but Excellent, though. Great question. Yes, so you certainly, the advising pre-application, yes, you want to make sure that you set up a session and, and talk with your advisors before you, you apply for anything. So you want to make sure that before you've started an application or done anything, you want to meet with your, with your Texas Tech advisors as the very first step. Okay, so the, the first thing you want to do is look into different programs that are good for your location, for your major. And then you would want to set up an appointment with myself or Allie. I oversee everywhere except Europe and Allie oversees in Europe. And then um, you would also want to have an advising application. And then Allie and I would go over the advising application that you filled out to help you narrow down the locations that you want to go to. So your first steps right now is just exploring the website and finding what good locations would be. Um, I also would advise you to um, get on with our engineering diplomats. They have office hours from nine to four every uh, weekday and they can explore their website with you and help you go through the application process and get you prepared for your next steps. Um, Ali, can you send that link in the chat for their office hours? Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Yes, that'll be the best option for you. Yes, but first you must complete that advising application before you meet with me. Which will identify, yes, okay. Does that make sense? So uh, again, you can access the advising application by selecting start application on the API in Dublin program page. So if you're on that program page and it says start application, you click start application. So from the from the Texas Tech website mm -hmm. that describes the Dublin page, there should be a link that um, that has that for you. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Allie. Awesome. Are there any other questions at all? These are great questions. So thank you all for your engagement. I really appreciate that. Are there any other, any other questions that we can help you with? Thank you guys. Appreciate thank, it. thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. It looks like Taylor said they've got it as well. So that's great. So thank you all so much for coming today. I know we've got one left. So <laughs> thank you, Taylor, for, for being here and sticking it out to the end with us for sure. Um, please be sure to let us know if you have any questions. Again, feel free to reach out to, to Laura if you have any questions. I'll enter my email as well just to see in case you have any questions, feel free to reach us. Yes, I, planning ahead is a good thing. So that's a good thing. You're on top of it, which is good. So thank you so much. And Ashley and Allie, thank you as well, as always. It's great to see you. Laura, thank you.
Thank you. And stop recording.